Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Head Crack After Hours is a duo who uh, is like, you know, a perfect bridge of like, you know, classic and future. And they're coming together for a dope cause. One time for the legend, Kareem Biggs Burke and the future legend, St. John. Hey, hey what's up? I like, that, I like that too, yeah. And we got Brooklyn and Harlem in the same spot. Yeah, right. With a little Bronx sprinkle on it. A little bit of Bronx, yeah. Cool, so let's let's bounce back to the origins, man. Uh, Kareem Biggs Burke, a lot of people know you from the whole Rockefeller dynasty, man, yeah. that uh, shaped and molded the culture for a long time. You, Damon, Jay. Yep. And once that was done, it was rumored that you was done with music, never would want to do it again. <laughs> and now, like the mob, they brought you back in. Yeah, every time I try to get out, they pull me back in. What was it about... You know, like uh, you know, the current state of music that made you decide, like right now, was the time to get in. Yeah. Well, I, when I when I talked about never touching music again, I never thought that I would be able to run into somebody that was a superstar again, right? So, last projects I'm doing is you know Beans, who've been on the label for several years, and then Kanye's first two albums. So the legacy was intact, right? You're selling over 60 million records. So I was just like, I'm fine with that because it wasn't the the music business I was attracted to. I was attracted to business. I like doing different things. But when I ran into St. John after hearing his music that Tata played for me, um, it was something amazing that happened. You know what I'm saying? And it sparked something in me. Just uh, appreciating um, the artistry and, and what he brought to the game. And then after meeting him and building a relationship and then him playing the current album that's um gonna come out i was i was in you know it was a wow factor because i couldn't believe that he did it twice you know to me the collection one is a classic and now he has another one and you know like i got familiar with some music on a on a title playlist you know i was looking for new things to work out to and like you know i found a nice little east coast playlist and it was the record that caught me was uh white parents gonna love this gonna hate this oh gonna hate this white <laughs> yeah, parents yeah. gonna hate this they and definitely me, ain't gonna love it and let, me, and let, me, let me tell you i came to work the next day like i was like running around like yo you gotta hear this song man this new kid st john he, i think he's from brooklyn or something right. and like yo everybody in the office was bopping to it and it's so dope to hear a new energy come out of new york because there was a period of time where like New York wasn't getting no love any not even in New York, yeah. really, it seemed like for a minute. And you really definitely giving the game a shot in the arm, man. Yeah. I'm glad you like it. <laughs> I'm glad you like that record. I mean, it's an aggressive record. That's the approach. That's the intent. Anything that doesn't break through doesn't break, right? Mm hmm And when you think about like how like, you know, the face of Brooklyn, what it was years ago, you think yeah. about the Jay Z's, the Bigs, the um, you know, you seem you have a different look than a lot of people who have come out of like you know Brooklyn in a long time. I mean, you had like you know uh, Joey Badass, yeah. you know, who definitely had a, you know a different style about himself. But like you seem like your energy represents an eclectic new energy that like New York has right now. Yeah, that, yeah, yeah. That's yeah. what's exciting about it because it's his music is where hip hop is going. It's not in the current state, so I always like to look forward, you know, to be ahead of the game. And that's what he brought to the table. Where now everybody knows that an artist needs a dope team, somebody who gets it, understands the business. Yeah. So when you know when Biggs reaches out to you and expresses interest in your music, do you get it right away? Because sometimes there's a disconnect between one generation to the you know the generation before. Did you know who he was instantly? Yeah, absolutely. When we met, I walked up to my I walked up to him and introduced myself. Cause we had we like I knew Tata and a couple of other friends that just intimate friends of his. And I was like, yo, we had never met. My name was St. John. And he happened to know the music. So it was it was natural. There was no fear. It's just another human being. You saying what's up? Right. Like, right? It just it made so much sense. So when you finally play your music for him or like you hear his music, what particular song was it that made you feel like, yo, this kid is different. He's special. The body of work. The overall thing. Yeah. If it, if I would have went in there and heard one song or two songs and it was hot, I probably wouldn't be here right now. It's because he makes a body of work that's classical. You know what I'm saying? I'm always interested in a whole album, not one or two songs. Got you. Now, like, far as people you looked up to or, like, where you draw inspirations from, because you don't just keep it all in one bag. You also, like, you know, you write... Yeah, um, yeah, you know, you know, do a dab, dab of singing here and there as well. Okay, you know, it's like so. Who, uh, you know, who, like, you know, who inspired you? I mean, as a you're looking, standing right next to me, he built the archetype of the things that inspired me. Mm -hmm. It was him, Jay, and Dame building a company that inspired me. It's funny, business principles are those types of models. Those were the things that were interesting 
still interesting to him. Those were the things that were interesting to me. It was half artist, half business, because I was trying to get out of my circumstance. Not just purely hustle, but create something, create an opportunity by making something. Like you physically, you got to make something, build your way out. So, but artists who were inspiring, it was Jay, it was Beanie Man, it was Beanie Siegel, it was uh, Capleton and Sizzlet. It was the, it's a wild, wild net of people that I grew up listening to. It just made a profound impact. Like you, how do you listen to Beanie and Jay and something not, strange not come out? This makes sense. It's, it makes sense why I make music this way. Yo, like, I mean, it, like, you listen to these old records now, and it's still the blueprint to where, like, you kind of want to recalibrate the sound to go. Because it seems like, you know, there's some people, you don't even have to rap good anymore, it seems like, in a lot you of really pockets. Don't. And it's just like, there's a really popular record out right now, and it's like, yo, everyone who's done the remix to this song, and I think you know what I'm talking <laughs> about, is better than the artist that made the actual record. But we celebrate this. I have no idea what you're talking about, by the way. Special Olympics <laughs> rap, man. That's what I'm calling it. Special. With the Apollo Kids rules. You can't boo these people. And then you come off like, I hate it. It's all messed up. So in addition to the music situation, you definitely uh, got to like, you know, your hand in, in film as well. Yeah. Uh, the Project OG with uh, Jeffrey Wright on yeah. HBO, which is touching on something that will still matter, unfortunately, 100 years from now, unless Hopefully something not. drastically, you know, drastic happens. Exactly. Uh, for those who never heard about the project, break it down. Yeah, OG is a film starring Jeffrey Wright that released on HBO uh, about a week and a half ago. Um, so Jeffrey Wright plays an inmate that's been in prison for 30 years and he's getting out. So trying to dodge those traps that might keep him in prison for mm -hmm. another 30, 40 years and at the same time scared to come home because he's institutionalized. And then we touch on the, uh, the, you know, the point of the restorative factor, you know, being able to be, to say that uh, he's sorry for his crimes, you know, and I think that starts the rehabilitation process because all these people are coming back into the communities. So I think that was a really important part. And um, to talk about the transition of people coming back into society and the lack of programs there that um, that we have in place, you know, to accept these people back into, uh, as they transition, you know what I mean, back into the world. Yeah, and, and, and it's, it's two movies. Cycle. Exactly. It's that and it's a hard true pain. So it's actually two movies on HBO. Yeah. Wait, say that again for clarification. Two movies on HBO. The second one is called It's a Hard Truth, Ain't It? Now, to tackle the you know a similar tone in, with both projects, what was it about it that you know you had a personal connection to? Um, I mean, you know, I speak about social justice and reform a lot, and that gave me a platform to you know to not only show what I'm speaking about, uh, but actually to talk about it as I go around, you know, doing press. Um, at the same time, when people could visualize something, I think it, it draws them in a lot more than just somebody talking about it. So, you know, with what Meek's doing, um, you know, even with 21 now, with his situation, I think that he's going to step up to the plate. I know he's doing some things for literacy, but I think he's going to be talking about social justice and reform, too. So it's just a different world right now. And I'm just happy that the younger generation is stepping up to the plate to talk about these, you know, important issues. Yeah, no, it's beautiful because, like, a lot of times, you know, when you think back, like, you know, 80s, early 90s, like, all the activism was done within the music, not much outside of the music. You know, you make a song that's, you know, politically driven, but there wasn't really a lot to go with that. But to see cats actually, like, you know, getting initiatives going yeah, is, is definitely fresh. Yeah, 100%. Now, when you think back, you know, in your upbringing and, like, you know, people that you got the game from, because you didn't go to actual business school, if yeah. I'm correct, right? Nah, not like, at all. Who was your OG that gave you the, the keys to, you know, be successful? I don't know if anybody ever gave me the keys, but somebody that I, you know, I always wanted to be like and emulate my life after was my brother Bob that got killed, you know, so That's God bless, yeah. But uh, there was really no OGs or nothing like that uh, to guide me, you know what I mean? We had to learn the hard way. Now, when you look at the way, you know, you, Dame, and Jay came into the business, kind of took it by storm, Yeah. created a whole bunch of empires out of one thing. Do you think the game is set up like that right now to where that same storm could happen again? I think so, because now it's, you know, we came in with the spirit of independence, but now all the platforms allow you to be independent really easily, you know, with the streaming services, with the, uh, you know, the tune cores and, and um, equity uh, platforms like that. And even YouTube, uh, you know, you, you're able to market yourself and put things out and, and take ownership. 
Got you. Now, St. John, back on you for a second. Mm -hmm. um, records is out right now. Yeah. They definitely got an energy to it. I can't wait to see what kind of damage these things do in the festival <laughs> circus, uh, circuit. Are you doing Coachella this year? I'm not doing Coachella, but I'm doing Rolling Loud. Got you. Yeah. You did Posty Fest, right? I did Posty How Fest. How was that? That was incredible. That was the very first Posty Fest. I was just actually got some headphones from that that this girl wanted. Shout out to her, but I got them. Anyway, it's Posty the Fest. Things. <laughs> it's the yeah. small things. Yeah. You know, you get a little gift bag. Yeah. I needed a special collaboration with these yellow headphones. I was like, I need those. Yeah. Those will look good on me. And he's performing at the Grammys next year, too. Yeah. Yo. It's, it's not announced. Don't say nothing. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> They're planning a Keep that between us. like a yeah. mofo. Like, yeah. Listen, <laughs> they just know what's supposed to happen. It makes sense. Sometimes you got to speak it. You got to speak your will to existence and make it happen. And yeah. I think mm -hmm. with the quality of work, even a new record, Trap, mm -hmm. that I got a chance to check the video out for earlier today, like, yo, like, it's about to be some things going down. No, it's going to be aggressive. It's it's that type of year. It's the energy is all the way right. It's 2009. Well, we're in the first quarter. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, we got we to gotta perform like we're in the fourth quarter. Yeah. I'm, I'm here to assist and help y'all score these points early because I believe in what y'all doing. Man. Okay. And like, you know, no matter what was going on in the yeah. landscape of hip hop, you know, when you know people ain't talking, you always just, you always did you. Yeah, yeah. You know, and, and just push through. Like, you, you know, you never, I, I never read an interview where you had anything bad to say about anybody. You just kept it focused and just, you know. It's all love. Yeah, <laughs> look, look for the next opportunity to create Everything something Everything is love. Dope. J and B said it best. <laughs> Yo, and, and to to see you mentoring a, a young artist, you know, which is Circle of Success Management Company, yeah. like you know, like St. John, um, you look around like so many artists come through, don't know how to do interviews, don't know how to do like a live show. So to see somebody come from an era where these things were kind of important, yeah, um, you know, I can actually can't take this. I can't take credit for that. That's what drew me in because he had every tool that you can possibly want to teach an artist. You know what I mean? He, it was like a veteran. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? After seeing him before, I can't even believe that that was his first album. I was like, "How is this dude so good? He just put an album out. Why is he performing this well?" So I'm watching him, asking myself like, "Something is going on." You know what I mean? We we joked about it. We was like, "I think he was opening up for Eminem like four <laughs> years ago or something like that." <laughs> like it's just it's just shocking to see that uh, the level of of what he brings to the stage. Uh, you know, being charismatic, the presence, controlling the crowd. I mean, Jay didn't have that, you know. I mean, Jay feet was playing in the middle of the stage, you know, early on, and you just seen that hand moving side to side with a cup in the left hand side, you know. what I'm saying, yo, <laughs> it's I, been I, 22 too. I went to um, I went to a rap sheet festival. Yeah, this is '96, '90. I feel like it had to be '96 because it, it was like Jay Z, uh, when he only had Ain't No Nigga and maybe Dead Presidents. Yeah, Nardo ranks OGC. And, at, and like Jay-Z went before everybody. Yeah. Had arguably like the worst stage presence I have ever seen. <laughs> and to see him go from that yeah. to like th two years later, three years later, to be like one of the dopest live performers in the game, like, yeah. you know, it comes from somewhere. You got to yeah. go out there and have those rough nights yeah. and, and, and learn about, you know, learn how to be better along the way. Yeah, I'm sure. Yeah. Like, what did y'all say to get Jay-Z in the mind frame to yeah. like... We didn't say anything. Jay... Jay did what Jay, you know, does. Even though he had a lot of experience prior to that, but I think you just grow into that, you know, and wanting to be the best. So he's always motivated by seeing something else or somebody uh, potentially being better than him. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And which motivates all of us because we're real competitive. That's what's up. Yeah. Now thinking back, St. John, what yeah. was the best show that you've had so far? And what was like the worst show you've had so far? I can remember the worst show I've ever had, the best show. Maybe that's yet to come. Mm -hmm. These shows, they, they're good. They're really good. They could not be polite about it. They're really good. And the reception is that warm when I'm performing because the audience that comes to see me, they're dialed in. Mm -hmm. Then It's not happenstance. They didn't fall into the show. They didn't walk in accidentally and somebody handed them a ticket. They purchased it. They seeked it. They went out their way. They were there early and on time. Right? My worst show, though, I mean, I don't know. I, maybe I was like, I, I might have been like 13 or something like that. And I was performing <laughs> with my brother and we got booed. We were in the Bronx. <laughs> We're in the Bronx. What venue? <laughs> I don't. It was an auditorium. I don't remember. <laughs> right? It was. A, it was like a showcase. Mm -hmm. Right? And we got booed. And at the time, damn, I'm doing the same things. Maybe I'm get. I got this from my brother. So when things got bad, he took his shirt off. I'm like, what's this nigga doing? <laughs> like, what is this nigga doing? Right? It, it ain't work. 
Now I take my shirt off. It works. <laughs> what kind of shape was your brother in when he was taking he was, his shirt off? He looked like me. He looked like a superhero. Okay. He looked like what I, whatever I look like now. He looked like a superhero. Your brother's older? That's yeah. What, that's why I'm going yeah, to the yeah. gym right after this. <laughs> Yo, being around in shape the shit, people. The, the, the shit that I got to deal with. Yo, I feel like <laughs> people help you get your life together. As I was sitting on my couch last night watching Rocky Three, because yeah. like you know AMC had a marathon going last night, and I'm like, Dad, gun it, man. I gotta do something better with my life. But <laughs> it'll make you do a sit up, man. Yo, yeah. for real, for real. When I used to watch like wrestling all the time and like watch boxing every weekend, no matter who was fighting, like I was doing so much better in my life. Like you know, like my mom died. I, I, I tore a tendon in my ankle, and I just kind of fell off a bit. But I'm trying to you know get back into the mix. Yeah. But enough about me. Um, the next body of work that you plan on releasing, yeah. what is it? It's called Ghetto Lenny's Love Songs. Ghetto Lenny's Love Songs. Yeah. What's the origin of the title? Uh, it's just aggressive. It's, I like things that speak. It speaks. It communicates on its own. It provokes curiosity. I like that. That's where my art comes from. Is live somewhere in the middle where you're interested and you're curious, but you you want to go further. Yeah. Right. And was you got a release date on it yet? I mean, it's supposed to come out in April, but don't let me tell you no lies. That's the worst part of this business, man. Like, it, you got to figure out when the water is right to really stick your tub, you know, your, your foot in the tub to really I mean, throw it out there. Yeah, it takes a little bit of practice, right? It's a little bit like hopscotch. You go, you out, you in, you out, you in, and you jump in, and you might get it. I need more. No, you're going to... I need, I need, more. I need more records, man. There's absolutely more coming. But right now, we're on Trap featuring Lil Baby. That's right where our head is at, because that's the newest record. Mm -hmm. Like, that's absolutely... How do I... It summarizes the momentum and the inspiration surrounding everything that we're doing right now. Man, so, like it marks the hustle for us. And if you haven't seen it, it's on YouTube right now. The video uh, isn't out yet, but the song is. I know, I, I yeah. listen to the audio on YouTube, yeah, yeah. Uh, Spotify, all that good stuff. Oh, that's crazy. He's from. breaking records in five days, uh, streaming services, you know, with this song already. Yes, yeah, it's, it's wild. The numbers look wild for us. So do you have a personal goal, like something that you're trying to attain in the next 12 months? Oh uh, yeah, it's, it's twelve, and then it's twenty-four. The twenty-four month mark is stadiums. That's the point. I don't say it with any smile, any varying expression. Stadiums, that big. It requires that much, right? Because what we want to do, we're gonna have to impact as many people as possible. So it has to be on the biggest platform with the biggest um, po prospect for visibility possible. Right. So stadiums. So when everything blows up, do you leave Brooklyn? Are you still there right now? No, I mean I. I live in an airport. You get what I'm saying? It is what it is. Yeah, I'm, I'm constantly on a rotation, but it's cool. I'm circling the sun, but with, with good intention. Yeah. The only oh. thing that changed, you'll probably just, it'll be tail numbers. Yeah. Got you. So all your plants are fish <laughs> dead. <laughs> <laughs> I don't keep plants or girlfriends. That's probably the best at this point in your career because, like, you're going to have some opportunities to, like, you know, like, you know, do some pretty awesome things and, like, yeah, man, you got to, but I mean, but sometimes you need a relationship, right? To well, help create the heartbreak, to help write the songs. Though, I got right? a lot of that. I got a lot. Compartmentalize the box. Now I got some in storage. It's cool. <laughs> <laughs> Enough heartbreak to write three albums. Oh, for sure. Like, but is there that one St. John that when you like write your records, you're like, you know what? I made this song so people like her will come to the show and be like, haha, I made it. Haha. <laughs> <laughs> you brought me back with that one. <laughs> uh, no, no, I'm not that spiteful. Yeah. What's that about spiteful? Well, that requires a certain degree. Look, you got a plan to make a point. Mm. That requires you to be a little petty. At least a little, at least quarter petty, right? <laughs> so you, we have no petty in the tank whatsoever? Uh, not like that. I've thought about changing song titles mm. so people know. So I'm talking directly to the person I'm talking to. So that means you did it. <laughs> That I mean, mean, that means you did it and you removed the petty from it by, by look, making the just, titles blank. That's just throwing a little confetti on the stripper, that's all. You understand what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> now, and, and, and Kareem, I know, like, your, your petty is in doing. Like, you know, and which is not petty at all. Like, I mean, all you know how to do is succeed and survive, right? Like, did you, you ever feel like you had something to prove to somebody? All the time. Right now, too. You know, I mean, I, I, you know, I had a strong legacy, right? After selling 60 million records, and now I'm getting back into the game. So yeah, I do got something to prove. Got you. Every day, you know, what I'm saying we got it. This has to be the best. Everything I do has to be the best. Everything has to be quality. Now, the level of quietness that you've kept throughout the business, yeah. it's the equivalent of like, hey, we use post-it notes every day. We may not know who made post-it notes. 
you're not as quiet as the guy who made post-it notes because at least, you <laughs> yeah, know, like, yeah, yeah. we can look you up and like your name will pop up. Do you ever feel a certain way about being the guy who was like in the background and just kind of just not at watched all. the game and just made your moves? Not at all. That's that's the way, you know, it was designed. And in this perfect time for me to step out because now it, it means something when, when people hear my voice and what I have to say. And what I'm saying right now is St. John will be the next biggest brand, biggest talent on the planet. Yo, I'm gonna have to stamp that one as well. I like that. You're gonna have to say it too, then, fam. Come Yo, on. ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> I'm, wait, which kid? Which kid? That one. St. John out of Brooklyn, New York, will be the biggest name in hip hop. Like, I don't walk into an office and tell people about music, usually ever. Yeah. But like, I literally walked in here and the grab his kid stew and made two other people huddle around me while I played. White parents gonna hate this out of my workout playlist. I usually don't share my workout playlist because it's mine. Same, yeah, listen, the same reaction you had is what I had. And I kept playing this, his album, Collection One, for everybody. Going, I don't even, I hate to drive. I would get in my car just to drive, to listen to music, and then pick somebody up and then ride around and listen to the album. Right. What's your favorite record? Off of Collection One. Out of your whole body of work. Like, if somebody never heard of St. John, it's the first interview they're hearing, and this is the one song that's going to turn them into St. John Fiends. What's that song they need to hear? Uh, you haven't heard it. It's not out. It's not out. It's, and there's several. Because that is emotions. What's yours, actually? As of yesterday, the... <laughs> I, I forgot the, the Is it balance? Balance. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Balance. Right now it's balance. It, it changes because this dude keeps going in and making my favorite song of all time. He he just he did that in the last uh, three weeks. <laughs> now, when is the last time someone's done that to you? Uh, it had to be Jay. Now, and you've been around a lot of creative people. Yeah. Between Jay, Kanye, Beanie Siegel, yeah. all the state prop. Yeah. Jay, all, Jay always, always makes seconds. things that resonate. You know, because a lot of times he talk about stuff that's the life that we all live. Mm -hmm. So I can hear bits and pieces of every everything that we've done in his music. So it always resonates with me. Um, same thing with Saint. Even though we didn't have that relationship before, but we live similar lives, and it comes out through the music. So are your parents still around? Yeah. They together? No. Nah. No one's parents are together. What's that about? Nah, my, 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 my black family. Nah, family. So, nah, so who who reaps most of the benefits out of everything that's kind of happening for you right now in your, in your um, career? Directly, I yeah. mean, my mom. She gets to she gets to hear it first. She gets to see it. She's super supportive from the sidelines. Going, look at that. I made that, and that's cool because she did make me right. So right. I'm like, look at you. You did a good job. Yeah. <laughs> Does pops come to the shows? Uh, you know, he's never been to a show. I keep making it a point to bring him out. Oh, Macaulay. Yeah. Is he in Brooklyn as well? He's in uh, Virginia. Okay. Yeah. That's not too far. It's like That's not super far. Greyhound on yeah. Amtrak, depending on how much you want to spend. I'm on the go. <laughs> put my pops on the gray. You crazy? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Depends on the relationship. <laughs> nah, nah, I'm not putting my... Even if I didn't like him, I wasn't putting him on Greyhound. I would take Greyhound before I take Spirit. You ever flown that? Spirit? Yeah. Fam, that's the Greyhound of the year. It really yeah. is. <laughs> Have you ever... Nah. He wouldn't fly to... Just you? to feel regular for <laughs> yeah. a day. yeah. Fair Kareem, I'm telling you, just to feel regular for a day, just to like to reconnect to the struggle. <laughs> if, if you ever felt like in your life, listen, I am too successful at this point in my life, just take a short flight on spirit anywhere. <laughs> he would stand up. He'd rather stand up. I promise you, he'd rather stand up the whole flight. Is it, is it a stand up plane? You got to. Uh, it might, hold, it like, feels like that. It feels like that. And you got to buy your own soda. Like, is the that soda bad? is not free. <laughs> soda? Dead ass. Like, the, they charge you for the soda. They charge you for everything. They might charge you for the seatbelt. <laughs> do you want to land safely? Yeah, do you want to land safely or not? <laughs> we'll put the cushion on the seat for the next 20 bucks. But it's rough out here. But yo, St. John, I'm excited to hear what you're about to do in this game. Uh, damn, yo, listen, damn it, man. Kareem, yeah. new projects, the movie's out now, uh, OG, and then the second one. It's a hard truth, ain't it? It's a hard truth, ain't it? Yeah. Available on HBO, HBO On Demand, and all that good stuff. On everything. And, and uh, check out Bolo Media. That's my new company. I just did a partnership with Valiant, so I'm looking to acquire films from 100,000 up to 100 million. So you'll be seeing a lot of things coming out with, uh, in multimedia from me. Okay, love it, man. So yeah. what that means is he's now a movie studio. That, and and like people require. want and need content across the board, so yeah, it's the best time to jump in. That's right. Exciting, man. <laughs> people ain't following St. John. Where do they go? S-A-I-N-T-J-H-N. Wherever you look at whatever, Instagram, Twitter, YouTube, Pornhub, all that. Same thing. 
Who, man? Well, you're <laughs> That's the future legend. Port, Saint Port John. Could have a, well, usually my camera's right there. I'm so confused. Yeah, That's the future right. legend right there, St. John. Yeah. That is the, the pioneer and OG. Kareem Biggs, Berkman. This is Hey Crack After Hours. Be sure you check out the projects out now. Call them. Hey.